Hey everyone, exciting times in the world of sport this week after three days saw the quick rise and sudden collapse of a proposed European Football Super League. You know, if only Roman Abramovich had been in charge of the Brexit negotiations, we could have been out within 48 hours of the result. Anyway, this week started with the announcement that 12 elite football clubs were going to be starting up a new league, which would play games midweek as a complement to the existing Saturday schedule. Depending who you spoke with, this was either five top-ranked Premier League clubs plus Tottenham, or five top teams plus Arsenal. You get the idea of how the joke works. There were also some Spanish clubs and some Italian teams, but nobody from France. And apparently Bayern Munich were very for it until they discovered that it said European Super League and not European Super Race, so no German teams either. Anyway, fans were pretty vocal about the idea, stating that Tottenham should be spending money rebuilding their squad not building a second trophy cabinet to collect dust. And as for Arsenal, I've not seen a gunner that angry since that bloke up in the Las Vegas hotel a couple years back. Anyway, by Wednesday the teams were dropping faster than political distance in Russia and the project swiftly collapsed to cue yet more sporting metaphors which I won't bore you with. Anyway, the public are now being dangled the prospect that it could still be revived with the Premier League being reimagined as a UK-wide event with Rangers and Celtic being invited along. And that's a project that for the past 30 years plus has been generally reserved for being discussed by, quote, the bloke at the end of the bar. The only real upside to that plan, of course, would be that the English fans could finally benefit from the free weekly education on Irish history, you know, King William and the Pope and so forth. You can talk all you want about Liverpool singing that song by Jerry and the Pacemakers, but Celtic's discography goes back three centuries. Anyway, elsewhere in America, there was news as Joe Biden announced that the US is going to be cutting carbon emissions by half by 2030, describing it as a, quote, once in a century opportunity, in so much as the taxpayers will be on the hook for it for the next hundred years. You know, cutting emissions in half is a bit like you or I saying that we're going to drop two stone by the end of next year. Very easy to say, but utterly ludicrous without a major change in policy, none of which has been given any proper scrutiny. You can go back to the football story. It's a bit like a bottom-rung club hiring a new manager who then claims that they're going to win the Champions League next season without explaining how, all whilst the fans sit around nodding. You know, even if we give President Biden the benefit of the doubt and somehow pretend that the money isn't going to be an issue, where are the cuts actually going to come from? Banning air conditioning in the South? banning the sale of new heating systems in Michigan, where the winters are 20 degrees below. These are all actually serious ideas being proposed generally by the same people that claim that mathematics should be banned from schools because it's racist. That's a real thing, by the way. Look it up. It's hilarious. In context, the city of Houston alone has a GDP larger than the UAE, and it's similarly reliant on oil for that money, which the president is now wanting to turn off in the way that you or I would turn off the television if we saw that Anton Deck were coming on after the break. You know, forget about healthcare or guns. The environmental movement is far more likely to cause the US to break up into multiple countries, because why on earth would Midwestern states commit economic suicide when they can just happily go their own way trading with Asia? In the meantime, ironically, part of the proposals being discussed see China promising, quote, peak carbon by 2030 which by definition means they're actively promising to increase their carbon emissions every year until the end of the decade, or worse, perhaps their plan is to continue beyond that, but offset it by eliminating Tibet and Taiwan. You know, perhaps that's Joe's plan all along, to cut emissions in half by getting rid of all the Trump voting states. That would be 25 states, 50% exactly. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.